Hello everybody, it's Mr. Sam at Kids Table. We are going to be making some strawberry shortcakes today. I'm really excited. It is one of my all time favorite recipes. You're gonna ask my mom, she knows that I devour it every time she makes it. So I'm going to give everyone just a couple minutes to get all of your ingredients together and your equipment. Our equipment and our ingredient list is not too big today. So even if you're just now getting around to it, it's not that big of a deal. So for your ingredients, we're gonna look at our handy dandy recipe card right here. We are going to make three different things today. One of them is biscuits. Another one is a really cool strawberry sugar and lemon mixture. And then the last is whipped cream. So for that, all we need is flour, powdered sugar, salt, some vanilla extract, baking powder, milk, lemons, some heavy cream. And this is really cool heavy cream. I'm gonna show you this later. A pound of strawberries and uh, a little bit of, where is that? There we go, sugar. For our equipment, it's pretty simple because we're actually going to use our hands a lot today. We're going to need a bowl, a couple measuring spoons that I want to go over in a little bit. And then this is the last one. This one's kind of cool. This is gonna be our piece of equipment that we are going to use for our whipped cream. It is a plastic container with a marble in it. So I'll let you take a couple minutes to get that together and put together. Um, also, if you have not washed your hands yet, make sure you do that. We don't wanna have any germs floating around in our strawberry shortcakes. So take some time right now to get those ingredients together, your equipment together, and we are going to get started on strawberry shortcake. Now, while you're doing that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about strawberry shortcake because if you know one thing about Mr. Sam is that he is obsessed with random facts. I love random trivia. It's my favorite thing in the world. So I found out that strawberry shortcake, I thought this was a Southern thing. I had a lot of pride in thinking that strawberry shortcake was a Southern thing. It's not. I was so disappointed when I found that out. Strawberry shortcake is actually from Massachusetts. It's a Northern thing, but I think in the South we do it better maybe, but regardless, we're going to do it great today. Also, um, I've made a version of this recipe at a couple restaurants, and I learned a couple little tricks that I am going to show you along the way that you can kind of pencil in to your recipe or just keep it in the back of your mind. It's just little tiny, little tiny things that I think you will find really interesting. So, hopefully you have all of your ingredients together. If not, keep on going, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. The first thing that we are going to do so we don't forget about it is wash our strawberries. So I'd like to do this at the same time, well not at the exact same time, but when I wash my hands too, so I can wash my hands so I know my hands are nice and clean, and then I'm going to run water over our strawberries to make sure that all of the germs and anything that's on our strawberries is clean too. So I'll be right back from washing these and washing my hands, and we're going to get started. So I got our strawberries washed. I'm gonna put them into this bowl for later. All right, so even though we just washed our strawberries, the first thing that we're going to make today is actually our biscuits or our shortcakes. Our shortcake is a sweetened version of a normal biscuit. We've got two different kinds of biscuits here at Kids Table, one that we actually fold together and it's called laminating. They've got a bunch of little layers. We're not gonna be doing that one today because it takes a lot of time. And this one, I like the texture and the consistency a little bit better with our shortcake. So, I told you that there was a couple little tiny tips and tricks that I learned along the way from making this recipe a lot over my lifetime, which is not that long. But one thing that I learned is not only do you wanna keep your butter cold whenever you make biscuits, but I always keep my milk and my dry ingredients cold too. So then that way, when my hands go in there to do the mixing method that I wanna show you in a second, that my hands don't get everything really warm 
everything will already be really cold before I get my hands in there. So, when we make biscuits, oh, what's up, Jocelyn and Lila? I think you were on last week and even the week before. I'm glad you're coming back. This is awesome. So, what we're going to do is something called, oddly enough, the biscuit mixing method. So, I've told you before about maybe the muffin mixing method. We did something called the straight mixing method. We've even done with our cakes something called the sponge mixing method. So, there's all these different kinds. This one, it's easy to remember. It's our biscuit mixing method. And Sana, awesome. So, what we're going to do is we are going to take all of our dry ingredients first. So, our flour, and this is very weird if you've made anything with kids' table that was baking before, because always the flour is last. There's always last, so that's a big difference. We're going to take our flour, we're going to take our baking powder, and we're using baking powder today versus baking soda because baking powder has that tenderizing agent in it that I talked about last week. And that tenderizing agent will make sure that our biscuits aren't too hard. And it looks like Ainsley's on too. What's up, Ainsley? How you doing? And when you get on, give me a thumbs up or a heart emoji. I love seeing those. They always make me laugh. So we're going to take our flour, baking powder, and then our salt. This is cool salt. It was made here in Chicago. It's so cool. I always walk by the salt factory on my way to work. So we've got salt, baking powder, flour. And we'll put this to the side. Or you can put it, you know, over in your fridge, like overnight too, if you're gonna make this tomorrow so it's nice and cool when you make biscuits the following day. But for right now, we're just gonna keep them in here. Then we have super cold butter. You can never get your butter cold enough to make biscuits. Keep it in the freezer, keep it in the fridge, whatever you like. My roommate will tell you I always have a huge brick of butter in the freezer solely for making biscuits. That's how often Mr. Sam makes biscuits. So I keep mine as cold as possible. And what we're going to do is we're going to chop this up into little cubes or into a dice. And those cubes are going to be what we push our flour into in a second. So I've got my chopper here. I want to cut these into squares about the size of Lego bricks. So I've got these slices here. I'm going to take these slices. I'm going to cut each of those in half and then in half again to make those cubes. realize I forgot to put one of our dry ingredients into our bowl. As I said, these shortcakes are sweetened biscuits. I forgot to put the sweetening agent in here. And that sweetening agent is our sugar. So I've got sugar in here for both the strawberry mixture we're going to make in a second. And we're also going to, yes, if you cut yours into fourths, that's totally fine. So I want to take uh, just a quarter cup of my sugar here and put it into the uh, flour mixture. And now I've got two tablespoons that are solely for um, my strawberries. So. Sorry, it's one tablespoon. So I've got flour, baking powder, salt, and a tablespoon of sugar in here. So you're following along. Alright, so I've got my butter here. And I want to get this butter into my flour as soon as possible so it doesn't warm up. Remember, your hands are 98 degrees. They're the Nick Lachey of body, of body parts, okay? If you got that joke, you're probably a parent. So, you want to make sure that you get these in there as soon as possible and you do this mixing method as quickly as you can so your butter can easily... Oh, um, I can definitely go over everything again. So, we put all of our flour, our sugar, our salt and baking powder into our bowl here. And now I've got my butter that's super cold and chopped up into a small dice. That's as uh, far as we've gotten along with washing our strawberries. So we are going to go ahead and put our butter into our flour here. And there's many different ways 
or different sayings that people call this. Some people call it sanding. I like to call it two ships passing the night so you get a better visual. So if here's one ship and here's another ship, they pass like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to put butter in between that and flour on our hands. So when we go like this, that flour smashes into that butter. And we're looking for nice flakes because biscuits are flaky, right? Biscuits aren't like cookies, they're, they're nice and flaky. So we're going to make those flakes by passing that flour into the butter just like this. So I'm going to take some of that dry ingredients, take some of these pieces of butter, and I'm going to go just like this. Oh, lost one. Just like this. So I get these nice little flakes. And we're going to keep on doing this until your butter is nice and flaky. But it won't start coming together yet because we're missing one very important ingredient in here. And that ingredient we're going to put in last. If you have any ideas what that ingredient is, especially if you have a recipe in front of you, go ahead and write it in the comment box and I'll give you a virtual high five if you can figure it out before we even do it. I'll give you a hint. It's our only liquid ingredient. Everything else is dry or our fat, which is the butter. So if you can figure out what our liquid ingredient that we're putting in here is, I'll give you a huge virtual high five. So once again, I'm passing it just like this. You can also, if you have gigantic fingers like mine, you can also just pass them through your fingers like this. But if your butter is really, really cold like mine, it might be a little hard to do this with just your, your fingers. And yes, it is milk. Milk is the last ingredient that we're gonna put in here. It is our liquid ingredient. High five. Gonna get a little bit of flour in that high five, but you got it, awesome job. So we're passing these together. And you're going to start to see, I wonder if you're going to be able to see this, but you're going to see kind of like chunky sand is kind of what we're looking at right now. The most important thing is getting all those large diced up pieces of butter smashed into the flour. Once you've got that, then you want to stop. You don't want to do this too much or you're not going to have those flakes of, of yummy delicious biscuits. Because not only is your baking powder going to make this rise, but also when the butter melts, it will steam a little bit and it makes a little spring in your biscuits to give it even more lift. So we've got our flour, our butter, our baking powder, our sugar, and our salt all in here. Now we are going to add the milk. Now, this is when I will say, if you really don't like having slimy stuff all over your hands, you can switch to a wooden spoon. Since my hands are already dirty, I'm gonna to have to wash them anyway. I'm gonna use my hands, but you can definitely use a wooden spoon if you want to. If you're gonna use your hands like I am, I make a little well, or what I do is I press out a little circle, a little like, a little lake in my flour mixture, like this. Almost like I'm making pasta, if you've ever made pasta before. So I make that little crater in there. And then I'm going to pour in my milk. And then after I pour my milk in here, I'm going to just pick off the flour around the sides and dump it on top of the milk. And I'm going to keep on going under. Uh, see, I knew it was going to be smart to use a glass bowl so you could see this. <laughs> so, we're going to keep on digging underneath just like this and then that way we can mix in the milk without making it super slimy and gooey all over our hands. We're going to keep on moving it together like this. And we want to keep being gentle with our biscuits because if we smash this together and make like a baseball out of our biscuit dough, all of those beautiful little flakes of butter that you made are going to get smashed in there. And that's not what we want to do, okay? So we're gently pressing our flakes of butter, our flour, and all of our dry ingredients into that milk, okay? Now, this dough is not going to look like a pizza dough. This dough is not going to look like a pie crust. It's going to be very flaky. So, if it's looking a little dry, that's okay. So, 
this is what, and I'm gonna put it onto the, the table so you can really see it because we're gonna shape our biscuits as well. So, as you can see, it is a mess right now. It's not together at all, and that's okay for right now. What we're going to do is we are going to take our hands and we're gonna gently press this very gently into a big mound. We're not trying to press it into a bowling ball, we're just trying to press it into a mound, okay? And then once you do that, you're going to very gently press it and coax it in or move it around until you make a big square. You want to go about half an inch thick, definitely um, nothing larger than um, like a full inch thick. So what I do is I take my thumb like this and I want my biscuits, when they're raw like this, I want it to be about that high, okay? Which is about half an inch to three quarters of an inch. So that can be your little measuring device. If you didn't know your whole, like one thing that I always recommend people doing, well kids, this is going to be difficult because you're going to grow up, grow up and get bigger. But I always actually measure my fingers, like this little bit of my finger, like the last part of my thumb, and even my forearm, so I have a natural ruler on my body. So I know this right here is that, that half inch. So I'm always gonna look at this and make sure it's around that size. So we're gonna press these biscuits into a square. And as you do this, the warmth of your hands is gonna melt this butter a little bit so it, can, it makes this come together and makes it nice and even. As you remember, our biscuit dough was super flaky. It didn't even look like a dough beforehand, but now I've got this big, huge, nice flake, like nice flaky, but still together dough. All right, so we got this going. Now what we're gonna do is cut them. Now if you have a circle cutter, you can have more classic looking biscuits but you can really cut these into anything you'd like. If you've ever made scones before, it's very similar to a biscuit. It's another quick bread recipe. So you can cut these into triangles, you can cut these into squares, you can cut them into circles, whatever you like. Cut them into stars, cut them into the kids table logo, whatever you like. I wanna cut mine into squares solely because if I cut this into squares, I know that I'll use every single piece of my biscuit dough and I am never one to waste biscuits. So. I'm gonna take my chopper here, cut right through the dough. And if it falls apart, it's totally fine. You can easily just put, push it back together. They're biscuits, they're not Faberge eggs. You'll be fine. So, this is about the size of the biscuit that I have. It's gonna be kinda of cool because it has these little wavy lines from my chopper. And what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to put them directly onto my baking sheet here. You do not want to uh, put pan spray or you know uh, melted butter or anything down on your on your baking sheet for these. They'll naturally lift up and if you put any type of grease or anything underneath it it's going to make it too oily and you're going to have really greasy biscuits. So just do a dry baking sheet for these. Make sure they're nice and spread apart. They're not gonna like spread out and get attached to one another, but this way they'll all cook evenly. And we're gonna put these in a 400 degree oven. If you have not yet preheated your oven, I did forget to remind you. So make sure that your oven is at 400 degrees. So, right now I've got nine biscuits on here. I also have a lot of leftover crumbs of my biscuits. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this, we're gonna smash it together, and we're gonna make one more biscuit. I always call this one the ugly biscuit because it's never gonna be cut perfect and it's never gonna be the same size, but this is the one that I 
that I eat when it comes out of the oven. Because I think it's always more delicious one because you put a little bit more work into it. So this is my 10th, my last biscuit. So, all that's done. If you made a mess on your table just like me, take the bowl that you were mixing your biscuits with and kind of like crunch up the table, move all of your flour, all your butter and all that stuff off the table, dump it right in there. Don't dump it all over your apron like I just did. So, got all that. What I wanna do is I'm gonna put these biscuits into the oven. I'm gonna wash my hands because I got butter and flour all over my hands. We're gonna put this in the oven. I wanna wash my hands and we're gonna be back to work with our strawberries. So, as usual, I'm gonna reference my recipe here. There's no point in having a recipe if you're not gonna look at it all the time. So what we're gonna do is we are going to bake these for 10 to 12 minutes. I'm actually going to put these in for eight minutes and then I'm going to turn my, uh, my sheet pan here around in 180 degrees. So whatever's at the front of the oven will now be at the back of the oven. So all my biscuits are gonna be cooked evenly. And from then I can also see how much time my biscuits need because they might need four minutes, they might need two minutes. And that way when I check it to turn them, I know exactly how much longer they need. So I will be right back. Alrighty, so I've got clean hands. I've got a somewhat clean table. I'm not going to say it's pristine, but I've got a clean table. And it's time to make our last two things, which our last two things are our strawberry mixture, which are three different ingredients. It's strawberries, sugar, and lemons. And then the next one is our whipped cream, or in this case, we're going to make shaken cream. It's going to be super yummy. So, first things first is the strawberries. Now, if you've ever had camp with Mr. Sam, which camp is now out, you should totally uh, come and join me for camp this year. It's gonna be super fun. But if you've ever had me with camp, I am very, very big on what part of the strawberry you can eat. I love strawberry tops. It's one of my favorite things in the world. We're not going to use the strawberry top, tops today for our strawberry shortcake. But if you clean your strawberry well, this whole thing tastes good, not just the red part. So I like to eat my strawberries like this. The whole thing. Also, if I, if I have a lot of strawberries, I like to take those strawberry tops and put them into a pesto. They're really, really yummy. I can only make five biscuits. That's totally okay. Totally perfectly fine. That means that your biscuits are probably just a little bit bigger than mine which power to you. They're gonna be super yummy. You might not have strawberry shortcakes, you might have strawberry tall cakes, but that's gonna be delicious. And you pre-cut the strawberries, totally cool. Not a problem. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna cut them for this, but don't worry about if you already pre-cut your strawberries. So, my chopper has a bunch of biscuit stuff on it, so I'm gonna get a different chopper right quick. I might as well get a red chopper for my red strawberries. So. One second. Man, that strawberry is so good. I'm going to have to prevent myself from eating more of them. So, what we're going to do is hull our strawberries. That's H-U-L-L. -L, and that pretty much just means remove the green tops. So, we're just going to take our chopper, cut off that part right there. I'm going to say that for later. Now I'm going to eat that. You might not believe me, but I totally am. Then we're going to put our strawberry up like this. And we're going to quarter them. So that means we're going to cut them into fourths. Because there's four quarters in a dollar, right? So we have nice little pieces just like this. And we are going to put them into 
power bolt. Just like this. We've got a lot of strawberries to cut. So I'm gonna do this a little bit, a little bit quickly, but you always wanna make sure that you're not gonna slip up and cut your hand. So still be careful. Even if you have a lot of strawberries to cut, don't rush yourself. Also, here we go. I learned this at uh, summer camp last year when we went to the Green City Market. I learned how many, on average, how many seeds are on the outside of a strawberry. If you think you know, go ahead and put how many seeds you think are on the outside of a strawberry in the comment box, comment box and who's ever closest, I'll give you a virtual high five. I want to accept all guesses during me cutting up these strawberries. I give you a hint. It's more than five and it's less than a thousand. You're gonna have to figure it out from there. Hundred and twenty, ooh, that's close. That's a solid first guess. You haven't gotten it on the nose, but we're getting close. I, I will give you a little hint. It's more than 120, oddly enough. It is also, it's more than 142. So, Here's another little hint. It is, there are 10 times more seeds on a sunflower than on a strawberry. So when you learn the answer, you'll know the answer to both. It's more than 130. This definitely beats the guesses of 20 and 30 that I've had before. So I'm very impressed off the get-go. I've got one more strawberry to cut, so you guys better throw in some last minute guesses. 500, 500 is a little high. 500 is a good bit high. I will say 130 is closer than 500. 160, we're getting closer. It's still more than 160. All right, that's my last one, and I am gonna keep all of these strawberry tops. Super good. It's great to put into a smoothie, by the way, all your strawberry tops that you hold. All right, 155, we're going in the wrong direction. We gotta go higher. 170, we're getting closer. All right, I wanna tell you what it is. Uh, on the last <laughs> on the last second, Lacey does 175. I'll, Corey and Lacey, I'll give you both high fives. The correct, the correct answer is 200. There's usually 200 seeds on the outside of a strawberry, which is crazy. And if you can do the math from before, that is 2,000. That almost made, that did make my voice crack. There's 2,000 seeds in a sunflower, which is crazy when you think about it. So, we got my strawberries here. What we're going to do is we're going to take the last bit of that sugar, and we're going to sprinkle sugar on top of our strawberries, which our strawberries are definitely sweet enough on their own but that little extra bit of sugar tastes fantastic. And then we're gonna use lemons. Now, I've cut mine in what we call cheeks, where I slice around like a rectangle of the lemon, so I keep all the seeds in that rectangle and I only get the pieces that don't have any seeds in it. And we're going to squeeze this lemon juice over the top of our strawberries. And this does a couple different things. This will keep the brightness of our strawberries, so they'll be nice and red still. It will also let the sugar dissolve into that lemon juice. And last but not least, it will brighten and enhance the sweetness of our strawberries. So it does a whole bunch of different things, all while just squeezing one lemon in there. Now, I just heard my timer go off, so I'm gonna check my biscuits. It probably means if you're cooking along with me that your biscuits are ready to be turned around 180 degrees. 
And I'm also going to see if my biscuits are done. Now you might ask me, hey Mr. Sam, how do I know if my biscuits are done? If they're starting to get a little golden brown on top, that's when you know that they're done. Also a little bit of butter will be just pouring out the side maybe, just a little bit. So that's how you know. I'll be right back to check mine and we'll finish up these strawberries and the liquor. So as expected, my biscuits need another two minutes in the oven. I turn them around so they'll cook evenly, but they still need two more minutes. So that gives me enough time to stir up my strawberries so all that sugar and the lemon juice can get fully coated around your strawberries. It makes a beautiful little glaze around your strawberries too, along with the strawberry juice. On the recipe, it says to let these sit for an hour. I obviously don't have an entire extra hour with you right now but I am gonna reserve these to add them in later. Oh, I have a rogue strawberry, flying strawberry. All right, so these are all stored together. I'm gonna put them to the side. And now it's time. It is time for every kid's table kid's favorite thing to make. I, it blows my mind every time how much fun we have making whipped cream. We're going to take our plastic container here with this little dude right here. This is a marble. Now, we've had a couple horror stories recently. Make sure you use a plastic container and make sure you use a smaller marble. If you don't have a marble, that's totally okay. Don't worry, don't panic. If you've got one of those little shaker bottles, the inside of that's fine. Or you can just find, you know, really anything that you know that you can clean very well and sterilize, you can put it in here but that's just to create friction inside, so it makes the cream uh, turn into whipped cream easier. If you don't have anything to put in there, that's really fine, you can make it without that as well. So, this is really cool whipped cream. This is local organic whipped cream. It is absolutely delicious. Yes, you can use a whisk instead of marbles. That is the normal way of making whipped cream. So yes, you can totally do that. Oh man, it's already been two minutes. My biscuits are done. I'll be right back. I gotta take those out of the oven. So here are two of my biscuits out of the oven. You might be able to see them, but I have a little bit of golden brown around the edges. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I don't want golden brown all over the top or on the bottom because that means that they've dried out a little bit because they've cooked too much. We want them to be nice and soft and buttery. So you just want a couple little golden brown bits. You don't want the whole thing to be golden brown. All right, while these are cooling down, my strawberries are marinating. I'm gonna open up my container here. I wanna use my local delicious whipped cream, whipping cream here. Pour it in. Okay. Also, if you ever see, I'm so glad that this happened. So, if you ever see a clump in your whipped cream, that's okay, that does not mean it's bad. So many people throw away their, whip, their whipping cream when there's a couple little chunks in there. That is completely fine. If it smells funky, that's when it's bad. But if it has some clumps in here, it's not like milk. What this means is that the cream or the fat has just started to separate a little bit. And that's common with whipped cream, especially if you're um, cooler or your fridge is like ours where it's really, really cold, it'll normally happen. 
but because there's so much milk fat in heavy cream, this happens. So don't freak out, totally fine. So I've got my whipping cream in here. I want to put in, let's see here, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. You would think I would memorize this because I made it earlier. And then finally, we're adding in two tablespoons of powdered sugar. Now, the reason why we use powdered sugar versus standard sugar in our whipped cream is for two reasons. One of them, one of them being that your normal granulated sugar could be a little bit grainy or a little bit gritty when you make whipped cream. But the biggest reason is, is in powdered sugar, there's another ingredient. The other ingredient thickens and makes it easier to whip your whipped cream, and that's cornstarch. So, a lot of people don't know that about powdered sugar, but it's actually two things, cornstarch and sugar. So, we've got those three ingredients in here. I wanna close this, make sure it's super tight. You don't want any whipped cream just flying everywhere, making a mess in your kitchen. It's a bad, bad time. It's happened to me way too many times. So, make sure, I'm gonna triple check. Whew. I'm wearing a black shirt today, it'd be a real bad day. So, I wanna make sure that that's nice and secure. And then we are going to shake this up. This is why I call it shaking cream instead of whipping cream, because I'm not whipping it, I'm shaking it. So, I'm gonna shake it just like this. And we wanna shake it till that heavy whipping cream gets nice soft peaks. And I'll show you what that looks like. But, you can over shake it. You can shake this too much. And when you do that, you make butter. We're not trying to make butter. We're trying to make whipped cream or shaked cream. And you want to keep doing this so you can't hear the marble moving around in the container anymore. So I'm actually almost there already. Been doing this too much. All right. So you see the, you see the marble there? If I go like this, it's in the same place. That means I know I'm really close, if not already there. So I'm gonna open this up. Oh no, I over whipped it. <laughs> I got too excited. That's, <laughs> that's okay. It's just a little bit over whipped. But it's all good. It's still gonna be delicious. Even we make mistakes. I got too excited. So, make sure you whip it up until it's nice and soft. And then, if you've whipped it to this, you know you went too far. So, all good in the hood. It's still gonna taste great. So, I've got my plate here. It is time to put this together. I'm so excited. I've only eaten a bagel this morning, so this is kind of my second breakfast. I'm like a hobbit today. So, I've got my biscuits here. I'm gonna put couple of my strawberries around it. We gotta make this look super cool, you know. We gotta be like those fancy chefs downtown. You know, we're gonna, oh, well don't spill it all over your plate like I did. Have a couple of them standing up like this. Make them super beautiful. I wanna take some of my little too far whip whip cream. I gotta stop going to the gym. Sorry guys, over whip my, over whip my cream. And I like to use this is kind of funny. I like to use a tablespoon to take this out. So when I put it on my, my little biscuits here, it'll stand up just like that, like a little scoop of ice cream. Just like that. Now I'm gonna take a couple more of these strawberries and put it right on top of that whipped cream. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that. So, it's not perfect, but it's gonna be super delicious. So, my cream is liquid still. Is that fine or sure more? Keep on stirring. Keep on going. Keep on wh whisking it together. You wanna to whisk it until you pull your whisk out and it will make a peak and then bend over just like that. A little like the hill from Nightmare Before Christmas. Kind of just go boop, just like that. Once you're there, stop. Don't whisk anymore or you're gonna end up like Mr. Sam. You don't wanna do that today. So, once you're done whip, whisking it together, that's when you want to put it onto your biscuit. The best thing is when your biscuit's still a little warm, so it starts to just melt over it a little bit. It's yummy. If it, 
if you want to let your biscuits cool down a little bit, it's totally cool. But that's how I like mine. So, this is one of my all time favorite things. You can make this with any type of fruit you like. We also have made blueberry shortcake here before, but I like peach shortcake if you've ever made that before. But any fruit that you find at the farmer's market is delicious on a shortcake. So, I'm going to devour this. I forgot to get a fork, so I'm gonna be gross and I'm just gonna eat a couple bites with my hands because I've already used my hands twice today for this recipe. So, let's see how good this is. Oh geez. Y'all, this is bomb. This is bomb.com as anticipated. So, I hope you enjoy your strawberry shortcakes just like I have. Please, 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 if you made this recipe along with me, take a little snapshot of it, put it in the comment box, put it on Instagram, whatever. Tag Kids Table. I would love to see them. I've been so impressed with what you've made with me so far in the past few weeks. I would love to see them again we also, I know I bring this up every time I cook with you, but we have Zoom classes, a full schedule all week. Definitely check them out. You get a lot of one-on-one um, -on -one instruction. You get to uh, cook with other kids. It's super fun. We have a blast. And coming up very soon, we have our summer camp. It is awesome. Me and a couple, other, a couple of the other instructors um, have been putting together these menus. They are so cool. And for the parents out there that get um, really stressed out about grocery shopping, we even have kits that you can get your groceries done by us and we can deliver it to you if you're here in Chicago. So um, keep your eyes out to that. They're, they're open right now so you can register your kid and some of your best friends so to come and do camp with me and the other instructors. But thank you so much for making Strawberry Shortcake with me today. It's a blast as usual. I'm gonna devour the rest of this. I know Miss Elena, she's here. She's gonna want some of these too. So enjoy your straw strawberry shortcakes. I'll look forward to cooking with you later on this week or next week, same time, same place, Wednesday, 11 o'clock. So take care. Thank you so much for cooking with me. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.